For people like Jerry Younger, flying is an exciting upside-down world. They call it aerobatics. On any warm Saturday afternoon, Jerry and his red biplane are thrilling air show crowds by rolling and spinning themselves across the sky in every direction possible. When it comes to competition in Canada, Jerry is the king. He has been the undefeated national champion for the last seven years. Well, my goal as uh, an aerobatic pilot was always to go to the World Aerobatics Competition uh, this year held at Kiev. Uh, but I've already fulfilled that as we've just returned from the USSR. Uh, the future, we hope to go again and win. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, Canada's aerobatic champion in my next flight. Nothing to do that time that the pit special that the wind over the side of the fuselage. This aircraft is a pit special S1S. A uh, symmetrical wing version of uh, 180 horsepower. It's designed specifically for aerobatic flying and is considered one of the highest performance airplanes uh, in the world today. I built this aircraft in 1971 and uh, I've flown it every year since that time at the Canadian Nationals and achieved first place each time in that. Yes, and it looks as though it may be almost invincible. If you're very good and he feels like it, I know he's been awfully busy flying in the Canadian Open Aerobatic Championships this weekend. He may just tuck in one of those incredible lumps of that maneuvers. We'll just have to wait and see. Okay, you want to give me that camera? Yeah, don't drop it. Ooh, I, hold, I hope Frank built this mount right. So do I. I hope you get hit in the head with that. No, well, if it falls off, you want to catch it. <laughs> cost more than your head, that's for sure. From this specially designed camera mount, we are going to see what the world looks like from the airplane while performing a lump sivak. It is the most difficult maneuver to do in aerobatics today. In this unusual passenger seat, we will watch the pilot ride through fantastic weight changes. While accelerating upwards, it will weigh over 1,000 pounds, and a moment later, nothing at all. Do you want to go get me some of that safety wire? Jay Hunt of the 1976 Canadian Aerobatic Team and his teammate Jerry Younger are the only persons who perform this maneuver in regular air show performances in Canada. A lump chavak essentially is an end over end gyroscopic tumble of the airplane. Uh, when it tumbles, the airplane's uh, completely out of control and you just ride through it with the horizon going in just about every direction possible. The Lumsivak was invented by a Czechoslovakian named Gladi Bezak. He discovered it by accident while practicing at one of the world competitions. In a Slavic dialect, Lumsivak means to shake. In order to bring all the apples down from an apple tree at once, you Lumsivak the tree. the pits it's uh, it's like an extension of my own senses uh, when we're in a sequence the airplane becomes almost part of me and I think what I want to do when the airplane follows my thoughts it's uh, about the most exhilarating experience that I've ever had 
As a military fighter pilot, Bill Leverseed learned aerobatics as a means of escaping the enemy. For two years, he led the famous Red Arrows jet fighter aerobatic team from Britain. In 1974, he came to Canada to organize the first civilian four-man aerobatic team in North America. And the more you demand performance from an aircraft, the more you've got to be able to feel from the response of the aircraft um, exactly how close to the limits you are, if you like, um, uh, how much you've got left, how much more you can demand from it if necessary. Now, if you take a, an aircraft like the Pitts, which is built um, specifically for high-performance aerobatic flying, it's a very flimsy structure indeed, if you examine it. Um, it's wood covered with dacron for all this lot. There's a little bit of metal up around the cowling around here. The rest of the aircraft is virtually all wood and a cloth covering. And that aircraft is required to take something like nine times its own weight in, in maneuver. And in order to be able to achieve that safely, you've got to have quite a rapport between the pilot and the aircraft itself. We're quiet here. No medium. What do you think you'll do? Great. What's aerobatics to you? I beg your pardon? What do you, what's aerobatics mean to you? It's a lot. I like it. What sort of relationship do you have with your plane? With my plane? Yeah. I love it. This is an aeroplane, and you should never love an aeroplane. It's just a piece of machinery. Remember that the thing is ready to catch me if I turn my back. And if it does what I tell it to do, it's okay. Otherwise, scrap it and get another one. Out of the chaos of materials in his garage, Frank Jenkinson is creating a unique order in the form of a custom-tailored pit special. Having sold his share in one pit's biplane, he decided to build a machine that would perform more to his personal demands. When it's finished, he plans to give Jerry Younger a run for his money in the next competition season. Frank is one of the pioneers of high-performance aerobatics in Canada. He has evolved along with a handful of individuals who virtually taught themselves the sport. The first time when I rolled on takeoff, it scared the hell out of me. You never realize how big and green the world is until it's all there right in front of you. It's a really high high. You get right from... <laughs> I get it right from the stomach. I don't know where other people get it from. I just feel really good. Uh, there's probably a, a fair amount of adrenaline uh, and so on involved. I would expect there's a fair amount of fear, or at least there is in my case, but uh, it's also it's the overcoming of the fear and going ahead and doing what's necessary while you're doing it. Flying aerobatics uh, is something that in this last couple of years I've had to forced myself to realization that it is a hobby. A, a few years ago I became almost a compulsion, but uh, you can't really afford to live your life totally on it. So uh, you have to force yourself to stop sometimes. In the spring of 1976, Rick Reeve took off from a grass field and nervously tried his first loop. Five months and 150 horsepower later, he had won first and second runner-up in his class in the two major Canadian championships. To me, that last few minutes marks the height of my mental preparation for a flight in competition. At that point, I'm, I'm as psyched oh, up for that flight good. as I have been for anything. Looks like they're going to be really hard to beat, I mean. You go over your sequence a hundred times in your mind, and you watch the wind and the competitors ahead of you to see how they're doing. It, just have to be the, the worst part of the thing is sitting there waiting, going through all these things in your mind. It seems that from the time I climb into the airplane to the time that I touch down again, the whole world outside the cabin really ceases to exist. And I try to tell myself that I'm going to draw on everything that I've ever learned about flying at this time. I've never known anything that evokes such total concentration in what you're doing. It's like your whole reason for being at that time is to perform this next maneuver as nearly perfect as it can be done. It's a fantastic sport because you're always striving for a perfection that nobody ever really attains. Although some of the best people in the sport have come pretty close to achieving perfection. I think I broke my spark plug. <laughs> The 
What kind of person does it take to be an aerobatic pilot? I don't think there is a specific type that it takes. There are very many more people in the world who are capable of doing precision uh, aerobatics that are highly demanding of your body and all the rest of it, uh, than will ever probably get the chance. And once you get into the thing, uh, well, you find there's so much more to any one person, particularly yourself, than you ever dreamed of. Uh, people would always say, is there some special training you need? Is there some special diet you have to eat? All sorts of questions like that. The answer is no. Um, Everybody's got far more inside them than normal life expects them to produce. High performance aerobatics is just one way of, uh, uh, of getting it out. And in getting it out, in fact, it makes you feel very much more humble because you realize, well, by Christ, I'm not even scratching the surface of what the human body is capable of doing or what the human brain is capable of thinking of.